Turn your Bible, please, to that uh, great and wonderful chapter, the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I hope you'll enter in real quickly into the beginning of the message. There are three books, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, and all of them have to do with the wisdom of the Word. I want to make two or three introductory statements. Number one, there is no wisdom apart from the Word. Maybe that explains why we're in such a foolish nation tonight. The Word's been counted out. Too many Madeleine Murray O'Hares. And America is doomed in her own filth and unable to win another war unless she repents. America had a decade of decay from 70 to 80. During the 1980s, we're going to reap what we sowed in the 70s. We're going to have, and the reports are out, we're going to have the result of the dope mines, liquor mines, cigarette heads and mines, poisons, pollution, and uh, the sprays, the insecticides, and uh, all of that is going to begin to take its toll in the 80s. I say that to say this. The only way that God's people are going to be able to stay well is to live by faith. Amen. We're going to either learn to live by faith or we're going to die by sight. Did you know that so far as we know, Moses never had a sick day? He lived 120 years and died well. Amen. fact is, he died standing up, unless God caught him as he laid him down. You know why? The Bible said he lived by the word he got it. The Bible said he stayed in the mouth. Uh, Deuteronomy 10.10, 10, he stayed in the mouth. Till he what? Till he got a whole armload of the Word of God. And listen, Moses only lived by the first five books of the Bible. That's all he had. Amen. He didn't have James chapter 5. He didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts. He didn't have the full revelation of the Word of God we've got now. And yet the Bible said he died according to the Word of the Lord his natural force was not abated. His eye was not dim. And so tonight, the realm where we're missing out is in the Bible realm. Man knows more facts and more things and has done more things and more inventions. In my generation, since 1914, June the 28th, there's been a many inventions. And yet those inventions have come. Did you know that the automobile has been developed since I was born. There wasn't any automobile. There might have been a, uh, maybe a, a T model. But I mean, the, 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 the automobile has been, the telephone system has been developed. Radio has been invented. Television, the monster of hell, has come out. I mean, that's the thing that's captured our children as well as the parents. Dads and mothers have lost their children, and children have said, we'd rather have a television set than a yeah. mother and a daddy. Yeah. And the newspapers and the psychiatrists have come out and said the children have made their choice for Hollywood rather than home. Yeah. That's, right. That's one reason I never let anything like that come in my home. And my kids or grandkids said, well, I'd rather, I'd rather watch the homos and husbands from Hollywood than be you, granddaddy. I said, fiddle. I'd kick the face out of that guy. But how much you stupid idiots, you won't do it. You get mad at me. I'm trying to tell you, we got to get our home back together. Amen. When you lose your home, you lost it all. Amen. I've been on the phone today, broken home after broken home, begging, pleading, talking. You know what's wrong? You know why people break up a home? It's because they love sin. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. You know what happens to a daddy when he'll give up a wife like one I talked to today? and leave four little children, all of them under 12. You know what's wrong with him? He's full of the devil. Right. Oh, but the wife said, he's a deacon. 
in the church. I said, I don't care, brother. He's a devilish deacon. Right. Yeah. Think of four little children. And you know there's somebody else involved. You know I know it. And he knows it. He made his choice. And he said, I'd rather have me a strange skirt or dress than to have my wife and four children. All of y'all can just do the best you can. Daddy's walking out on you. And he calls himself a Christian. That's rotten to the core. Amen. You know what's wrong? They're out of the Word of God. Right. They watch television until their eyes are big as grapefruits and got a beetle brain and no heart at all. That's right. Amen. And, and yet, the preachers today will not cry out against their main enemy. Right. They'll let their churches get empty, stay empty, yeah. and sit on Sunday afternoon and watch professional uh, yeah. gambling football games, and yet they will not be ready to preach on Sunday night. What a price we're paying. I'm talking about the Word tonight. Fifty-two things from the 119th Psalm. I'm saying, first of all, no man can have wisdom without the Word. Amen. Number two, nobody can have power with God without the Word. Number three, nobody can pray intelligently unless he prays according to the Word. No man can get his prayers answered that doesn't pray scripturally. No man can pray inside the will of God while he lives outside the Word of God. Put that down. There's no way. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Ask what you will. It shall be done for you. What I'm saying tonight, I've said a thousand times, but I'll say it again and again. We've got to get our people back in the Word of God. Amen. People say, well, what is your therapy? King James Version. Right. Amen. You're down here looking over the work, aren't you? Brother, people say, well, Brother Olaf, what have you got? Bible. What do you use? Bible. Amen. What do you do to the children? Make them learn the Bible. Amen. Preach the Bible to them. Amen. Get the Word of God into them. That's what happened to this bunch up here. Amen. They've never been a meaner generation than this one right here. I mean, they've done it all. They've been through every bit of it. Little old girl looked like angels tonight, but really they looked like devils when they came in here and acted like it. Some of them tried to kill everybody. Huh? Tried to kill themselves, knocked themselves out. There they are, up there singing tonight. You say, what did it? Jesus. Amen. You say, how did he do it? Word of God. Amen. Who made it real? Holy Spirit. Amen. And yet the state says, we're going to ask you to go by our standards. No Holy Spirit, no Bible, no Christ, no nothing. I got an ugly letter this week. I answered it today. And he said, I don't understand. Why? Hey, you can't just go ahead. And uh, you know the, the, the cry, they say, you make yourself a law unto yourself. In other words, you just set your own. No, God set my law for me. Amen. I mean, he's, he's the law. The, 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 the law of the Lord is the law. The law of the land, the Constitution. But let me tell you something. When they change the Constitution, to mean something else, I could no longer represent the Constitution. But as long as the Constitution says what it does, I can stay by it. Amen. And have no compunction of conscience. The Constitution stands for that flag right there. Amen. And I told him in the letter, I said, listen, I, I would never salute the flag again. If I were to take a license, which means I would surrender my conscience, and I'd say to the Bible, you play second fiddle, please. You, you've been a good old book, but you're out of date now. And I'm going to go by the updated, rewritten rules and regulations and minimum standard. And I'd say to the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to step aside now because the DHR is coming in and take your place. That's exactly what I mean. Right. I'd say to that old flag and that old eagle, I said, honey, I appreciate you. You've been mighty sweet. I've saluted you, I guess, for, well, 65 years, nearly about that long. But I'll never salute you again because I'm not an American anymore. I'm a member of the DHR. I got me a license. I'm state operated now, and I stand against what you was, what you soaked in. That's the blood of American people. And if you don't see that, you're blind as a bat backing up. That's what it's all about. I'm an American. I'm a Christian. I'm a Bible believer. I believe in the Lordship of Christ, the leadership of the Spirit, and the authority of the Word of God. And if you do, you ought to be standing right where I'm standing. Amen. Have no been a bunch of little sissy little old preachers. I'm telling you, couldn't even mock a preacher. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No wonder we're in the mess we're in tonight. The standards have been shattered. No dress code. No anything else left in the church today. 
lady called me today from up in Oklahoma. Seemed like a precious lady, a member of the Church of God, and uh, she'd have been a member of the assemblies and so forth. And she said, Brother Olaf, I listen to you all the time. I want you to notice. She said, I listen to you and I love you and I believe in your work. And she said, nobody knows what you could do to help me. Said there's a little couple here, sweet and precious, wonderful and fine. And said, Brother Olaf, uh, do you uh, have a home for unwed mothers? And I said, yes, out of Texas. They run me out of Texas. And I said, it's over in Mississippi. Oh, she said, so far, so good. I said, that's wonderful. Maybe I'm going to get my prayers answered. And said, we've got a young couple. They're so wonderful and fine. And it would be the greatest delight of their life if they could have a little baby in their home. And brother, I said, uh, are they Christians? Oh, yeah. I said, do they smoke a drink? Well, said, he smokes. I said, forget it. Just, she said, what? She said, she, she said, are, are, are you a Baptist? I said, I'm a Christian. She said, brother Olaf, even I've been disappointed in holiness, people, smoking, no standards, dress, everything else. See what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. The people that used to preach and practice holiness, and here's the thing, it's bad. A lot of people practice holiness with the hope of going to heaven through their own holiness. Yeah, that's right. And brother, when I, if, if I believed in living holy in order to go to heaven, I'd try to get with it. Right. I mean, I'd sure want to be holy because I wouldn't want to miss heaven. But... Brother, I believe we ought to live holy because we're saved Amen. and not in order to go to heaven. Amen. I believe if we are saved, we're holy people. Yes. Amen. You know how many saints we got here tonight? Every person that's saved is a saint. Amen. Catholic friend said to me, you don't believe in saints. I said, what do you mean? I don't believe in dead saints. I believe in living saints. Amen. Y'all have to die before you become a saint. We, all, we saints while we live. Amen. Now, I finally said, well, I didn't know you believe. I said, listen, fact is, we believe in more saints. We believe you're either a saint or you ain't. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you're saved, you're saved. Isn't that right? Amen. Sure you are. All right. Now then, you ready? Let's go to the 119th uh, uh, Psalm. Wonderful, wonderful Psalm. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, right in the middle of the Bible, the longest chapter. And could I, could I tell you what the first word is? Blessed. You know what that is? Happy. We're on our road to happiness tonight. The 119th Psalm is going to give us everything we need to make us happy. And so in this 119th Psalm, where there are so many wonderful verses, I'm going to give you about 52 things that he says. Number one, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his commandments and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Now, number one, then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. The average person lives in the land of shame. We walk and talk with these words, I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. I mean, I'm just ashamed. I'm ashamed of my puny life. I'm ashamed of my little thing. I'm ashamed of what little... I'm ashamed. And yet the Bible says, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy command. I praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. Yes, notice, in the ninth verse, in just a moment, I'll keep thy statutes, oh, forsake me not utterly. Now, what's the problem with young people today? Why did they have the rock concert here this week with thousands and thousands of dirt and filth and rock and roll and dope and dope dogs and 25 officers trying to patrol? Why? Why? Uh, what's the hope? Your mothers and dads said, you know, they look at me and say, I just don't know what's wrong with her. Brother Olaf, somebody's got to help get her head set on straight. I mean, uh, her, her personality's changed. Why, this time last year, she was the sweetest child you've ever seen. I cannot imagine what's happened to her. I tell you what's happened to her. The devil got a hold of her. Oh, I tell you, did you know that in all these 
30 years we've been working with people and more, we've never escorted one to the couch of a psychiatrist. Now, to me, that's amazing to get as good results as we've gotten because every person that comes to Christ, you see, he's the head fixer, the heart fixer, the hand fixer, and the feet fixer. Fact is, he does a turnkey job. Amen. And that's when you said, I pray, God, that your whole soul, mind, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He's the one that'll do it. Dear friends, we don't do it. You don't make yourself holy. You don't keep yourself holy. Now, uh, the Bible didn't say, he, he said, keep yourself in the love of God. He didn't say, get yourself in the love of God. A lost man is dead. He can't get himself in the love of God. He said, keep thy heart pure. He didn't say, make your heart pure. He said, keep it pure after God makes it pure. You say, how can you do that? We'll come to that in this great and wonderful chapter. Let's read on. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Listen, the word of God and impurity cannot live in the same house or heart. No way. If you read the Word of God, believe it, stay with it. You can watch the impure things that take place. You could not read impure reading material and read the Bible at the same time. And yet, I'm afraid in this country that the people who call themselves members of the churches, pastors and preachers and so forth, they spend more time reading the daily paper than they do the yeah. daily Word of God. That's sad. I mean, it's just sad. And they ask me that all the time, and they played this thing up all over the nation. Brother Roy will not even allow a newspaper. Can you imagine? Why, he, 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 it's unreal. <laughs> Is that right? There's nothing real about the newspaper. Garbage sheet of the community. It advertises liquor. It advertises beer. It advertises cigarettes. It advertises picture shows with their nude scenes and it advertises uh, X-rated and all the and got all the pictures. Let me ask you this: Why would a Christian want to bring that kind of slop into his house? Hmm? I mean, why don't you get over on that side and, and instead of condemning us, let me ask, you say, why don't you? I say, why do you? All right. Where will all shall a young man cleanse his life? What's the hope? Uh, wait, what's the hope of a young people? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And wait a minute. You'd say, Brother Ola, the public school system cannot do it because they're not allowed to have the Word of God. That's right. There's no way to cleanse them in the public school system. Right. You wonder what's happened to the public school system? They kicked the Bible out and now the dope came and now then uh, all sorts of... Uh, you know, I was talking to a teacher last night. She called me. And uh, she won't know how we're getting along. I said, fine. I mean, we're... Uh, the ship's lo loaded. I mean, full cargo and full steam ahead. I mean, we're loaded to the hill. And still afloat. That's the thing. People predicted we're going to sink, you know, and he's going to go under and all that kind of stuff. No, we're going over. She said to me last night, she said, I'm telling you, she said, I don't think I'm going to get with the governor because said uh, he's just not uh, willing to look after us school teachers. I said, uh, tell me, how much do you make? She said, 19000 a year. I said, 19000 I never knew you. I don't think you got that much sense. I've known you all your life. She said, Nine, she gets 19000 I said, how much your husband gets? said, 21 plus. I said, you mean $40,000 a year? 40000 for a couple of school teachers? She said, sure. Not enough. Well, I said, I remember when you didn't have 10 cents, and yet you're getting 40000 you're still not satisfied, are you? That's Americans for you. $40,000 a year. And they say they can't make it. I tell you one thing. The way this school system's going, and a lot of them haven't shut down because they don't run out of money. That's a blessing. Say what you please, fellas. Anytime you send your children to be taught by infidels and atheists and beer guzzling, cigarette sucking, you've ruined your children. I mean, you've, you've laid them on the altar. I mean, you. I'm going to say something else. What would you think about a person, and I know this is a little uh, touchy, but 
What would you think about a lady that said to the little girl, uh, Honey, uh, I want you to get on your little dress now, and I'm going to give you uh, 75 cents, and you're going to go across town, and I'm going to take you and drop you off, and, and uh, there's a house over there that um, uh, is not very nice, and but I want you to go in there, and you knock on the door, and say to the woman, not lady, My mother gave me 75 cents and asked me if you would be willing for me to watch you and the people in this house for the next two or three hours, and I, I'm going to pay you. i got 75 cents for you if you'll just let me come in the house and watch everything that goes on. I mean, the beer drinking, the liquor drinking, and the cigarette smoking, and then all the rest. And my mother said, if you would, she'd pay you. You say, brother, what are you driving at? Can't you figure that out? Isn't that what she got in the living room? Isn't that what the little girl watches? Isn't that what the older ones watch at the foot of their bed after you go to sleep at night? Hmm? And then you wonder why your little girl is begging for some protection or an abortion or something else? Mothers and dads, we're going to have to get back to the book. Where will all say a young man cleanses with? By taking heed that to according to the word. Only way on earth for us to purify our young people and keep them pure is to put the word of God to them and do it early. I got a friend. He's got four children. The first word they ever heard in their life was Jesus. People said, well, Brother Bill, those little old children, <laughs> they couldn't even, I mean, their, their eyes wouldn't even focus. I mean, their, their head, they had the limber neck. They couldn't even, and, and you were over them saying, Jesus loves you. Jesus. He said, well, I just, what do you think I ought to say? Most people say, can you say, Dada? Mama? Huh? I don't know. To me, that's not as sweet as saying, can you say, Jesus? Huh? You say, fanatic. I thought you was going to say that because you don't know no better, do you? See? I mean, you never have known what it was to put Jesus first. I told you last Thursday night about life's main priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And brother, you can't seek the king without seeking the king. And the king's name is Jesus. Put him first. Put him first. All right? Where will all shall a young man cleanse it? Well, he said the word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Now then, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. That's chapter 119 and verse 9 and verse 11 that go together. That I might not sin. Now then, blessed, and we'll just skip to a verse, if you will, real quickly. It's at verse 17. Deal boundlessly with thy servant. Why? that I may live and keep thy word. Give me purpose in life. Did you know people have called me yesterday and today and said, Brother Wolf, I have no purpose for living. I don't care whether I live or die. I'm not interested. We've had probably 500, maybe a 1,000 that came in with suicide marks on their arms. I've looked at the many one right back in the office, and they had patches right here and right here. I said, Well, honey, you didn't make it, did you? No, but I wish I had. I said, oh, you won't be here very long until you be glad you didn't die. And I've heard him to say, just tying it a ring, there's no way you could make me stay in a place like this. I said, oh, yeah, there's a way. <laughs> but you see, they don't understand. They don't understand. Let's, let's run on. And uh, verse 18. Uh, verse 18. Open thou mine eyes. Why? that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Verse 24, verse 24, Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Uh-huh. The Word of God is the best counsel you'll ever get in all the world. Thy testimonies, my delight and my counselors. Verse 25, my soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me according to thy word. Nine times in these precious verses in this chapter, nine times he's asking for quickening. It's always by the word of God. Uh, if you want to be quick on the draw, get in the word of God. The man who knows the book always got the answer. 
You never have to wonder, scratch your head, wrinkle your brow, and say, I just don't know. Brother, you'll be quick on the draw if you know the Word of God. That's the answer. The every answer you need. All right. Where are you going to get your strength? Verse 28. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Verse 32. I will run the way. Amen. That's good. I will run the way of thy commandments. When? Thou shalt enlarge my heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off in a run, and I'm going the way. The way of God, of course, is the word of God. And then, verse 36, the answer to covetousness. This is the cancer of society right here. Incline my heart under thy testimonies and not to covetousness. This old world is so selfish and people are miserable. I was talking to a friend of mine today. I've been looking for something all of my life. I don't guess I've ever found it. Ever since I've been a preacher. I've met a few, not many. I don't hobnob with them because they're too miserable and you can't help them. You hardly ever find a happy man and a big bank account together. They just don't hobnob together. You never find. You know, I was thinking today, and um, we have so many helpers around here, I'm richer than all the rich men put together. I've got all the help in the world. In fact, they just run over each other willing to help me. You know why? Not because I'm going to pay them, but because they love the Lord and they love the work and they're grateful. You know why people work for a rich man? Paycheck. I mean, just hand over the spondulics. I mean, I'm interested in the money. But you see, God's people serve the Lord because they love Him. It doesn't mean they don't get paid. They do get paid. I tell you, dear friends, I dare say tonight, and I thought this today, our people, most of them, are in better shape than you've ever been in your life. You owe less bills because you know you can't afford to make any bills because you couldn't pay them. And yet, you're living better than you've ever lived in your life. You smile more, laugh more, eat better, sleep better, go to church better, enjoy everything more, and you're living it up right now. And nobody could refute that unless you're backslidden and getting tired of walking with God. Nobody's ever miserable and unhappy on this farm unless they begin to rebel against God or His Word. You get right with the Lord, love His book, you'll be happy in this place right here. All right? Let's go a little bit further. Open my eyes now that I may behold wondrous things in thy word. Some precious things, and he wanted, and he couldn't, he couldn't show them to anybody. He came home and put them in the tent and buried them. All he could do is go in and close the tent door and say, oh, y'all gather around, let's look at all of our income and everything. My, this marvel it? Nobody else got what we've got, no, and you're not going to have it long either. That's right. Turn away. All right, what is the answer? Verse 42, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me. Why? I trust in thy word. Folks, you listen. You boys may be, thank you, maybe you've never been educated. And some of you didn't go your dropouts and you feel like, well, I'm not... Ed Let me tell you something. If you stay in the word of God, you will never be able to say to anybody, I just don't know the answer. You'll know the answer to every Amen. question that needs to be answered. Did you know Amen. why? That's what he said right here. Because he said, I trust in thy word. Now then, let's go to verse 45. I claim this one today all over again. I walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I'm going to be free. God's going to set us free because I'm trusting in thy precepts. I'll speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. You know, one thing the Lord's let us do, he sure let us testify before some a lot of political leaders, hasn't he? Practically all the senators, all the representatives, practically all the attorney generals and the governor, and we've testified uh, before uh, various groups and fixing to come up to another group and testify before them. We've gotten speaking to two bands of lawyers. Brother, I'm glad God gave me the answer. And I, I, wouldn't, I didn't stutter when I told him. I said, it's Jesus. It's the Word of God. We'll not be ashamed when I speak thy testimony before kings or whoever it may be. I'll delight myself. Thy commandments, which I have loved. And now then, verse 50, you'd say, Brother Olaf, I'm going through some sorrow. This is my comfort in my affliction. 
for thy word hath quickened me. And then, verse 51, The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. Now, I'd rather be in derision than in decision. I never have had or in confusion. I'm not in confusion. God's people never need to be confused. The Bible said, Whosoever shall believe on the Lord shall not be confused. You won't have to be confused. Now then, let's read uh, verse 54. How precious. Now, I've experienced this a little bit, and maybe you have. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. Think of it. As I travel along, the statutes, you know what that is? The Word of God have been my song. Have you ever known anybody really sing, uh, heartfelt singing that didn't believe the book? Have you ever noticed, that's the reason I'm not interested in semi-classical or classical or country and western and uh, rock and roll. I, I, that's junk. It's too empty for me. I mean, all these little old love ditties, you know, that somebody uh, gets up and hoops and hollers and sings and all. I, I want something real, don't you? I mean, I want it to come from the Word of God. He said, thy statutes have been my song. You know why? If the statutes are my song, I'll be singing them in heaven. I'm not going to have to change songs when I get to heaven. Just keep on singing. Amen. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. And then in verse 56, this I had. And I tell you, I tried to figure that out every time I read. Because I kept thy precept. This I had. He didn't even put down what you had. You say, reckon what he wants. Just sky's the limit. Just like the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, want for what? Anything. This I had because I kept thy precepts. What did you have, Brother Wolof? I had peace. I had joy. I had the overcoming portion. I had all the provisions that God wants me to have. I had the assurance of my salvation. I had enough joy to share with somebody else. I had some love and compassion. You know why? I kept thy precepts. Let's go a little further. Verse 59. I thought, hit it. <laughs> That's something the average person can't do anymore, isn't it? I thought, and what would you do? Turned. I thought on my ways and made a 180, and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. If we could get America to sit down tonight and just do some thinking. You know why people don't like to come to our church? A lot of them, we make them think. We make them think about eternity. We make them think about sin. We make them think about their home. We make them think about their children. We make them think about the rottenness of this generation. People don't want to be made to think. I mean, don't disturb me. I mean, they sleep. I mean, you know, I'm just getting along all right. Stay out of my way. I mean, don't... Uh, uh, one preacher got up the other day and he said, Well, I'm just thankful I'm not an alarmist. I am. My alarm clock's been going now for 48 years. Never run down. Getting louder all the time. That's where it ought to be. And you, you've got to alarm the people and alert the people. Verse 61, The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I've not forgotten thy law. Amen. You said, what do you mean, bands of the wicked? The wicked, unrighteous decrees, they robbed us of our children twice. They robbed us of our freedom. They robbed us of a lot of sweet and wonderful privileges. They robbed us of our money. We've had to spend money. Four, four groups of lawyers got a uh, deal today, and it has to be uh, paid 1100 and some odd, one lawyer, one month, and on and on we go. But I didn't forget the Word of God. I kept thy law. There's one thing we've never swerved from the Word of God. because, And, and dear friends, if we do not leave the Word of God, it'll never leave us, and we're going to have victory. Amen. I can hardly wait to see the Word of God vindicated, and it's going uh, to be vindicated. Now then, uh, verse um, 61. Well, he said, Rob, but he said, uh, uh, I've still stayed with thy word. Now, verse 62. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Well, evidently he went to bed a little early, didn't he? Hmm? You know what's wrecking the health of the American people? They don't know when to go to bed. Did you know that one hour of sleep before midnight is worth two after midnight? Do you realize that America is prowling like possums at night? And down the back alley in garbage cans they go, eating at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, hamburgers, french fries, 
I mean, uh, potato chips. I mean, uh, all the stuff you can think about. And then go home and ride nightmares till daylight. And I tell you, can you imagine? And then people say, well, I don't know what's wrong with my health. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Well, he said at midnight, he must have gone to bed about 8 o'clock. He'd already slept four hours, and he woke up and he said, I just believe I'll get up and have a Thanksgiving meeting. Uh, turn on the light or lay down in the bed and quote the scripture and sing a song because of thy righteous judgment, because you're so right. And then verse 63, I'm a companion, amen, of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. Now, that's where your companionship comes in. And are you my companion? The Bible said uh, some of them were made companions of me while I went through some things. And he said, I'm a companion of who? All them that fear thee, that means those that believe in thee, and faith thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. And the only way you can and fear the Lord and believe the Lord is by keeping his precepts. Now I want to give you something, because in this chapter, uh, the affliction uh, doctrine is pretty well uh, put out. He said, verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. I tell you what, when health begins to fail, when trouble comes, I mean when the wind begins to blow and you begin to shut the shutters and pull the windows down, the rain begins to fall, and you begin to take precaution and so forth. And he said, now then, not only that, but let me give you verse 71. It is good for me that I've been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Verse 75. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. God's been faithful. All he was doing was being faithful to me when he permitted me. Now, verse 92, and these are four tremendous verses. Verse 92, unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. I believe that. Folks, we might as well face it. I'm glad to face it. I don't believe I'd ever lived through the 70s had it not been for the Word. How in the world could, could you... I mean, and I'm certainly not looking back because I'm so thankful. And I don't believe, and I imagine, I'm going to say, if the Lord lets me live the next ten years, that the richest years of my life of preparation were the 70s. I mean, 1972, 1980. I believe that the Lord was getting us ready for the 1980s. You wait and see. You wait and see. More and more, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. You're going to understand that... Uh, this preacher, plus his comrades of service, had to stay in the boot camp, learn some things, and learn how to rejoice and be exceeding glad, knowing that our reward is great in heaven. Now then, look at verse 72, if you will. Verse 72, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Now verse 73, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding. Why? That I may learn thy commandments. Listen, did you know the purpose of school ought to be to learn the Word of God? And yet, they're not allowed to have the Word of God. He said, would you, would you just give me understanding so I could get a hold of the Word of God? That's the reason. But you know what we do now? We go off to college and say, now, I want a college education so I can make some money and uh, won't have to dig ditches and work so hard. I mean, that's the purpose of it. It's materialistic to the core. I mean, we send people off to school to make money. And when they get disappointed, they decide, well, I'll just steal it. And they go into trouble and sin and everything else. All right? Now then, look with me, please, at verses 85 to 88. The proud have dig pits for me, which are not after thy law. Uh-huh. They're not after thy law. They didn't get it out of the book. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon earth. But I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. And then verse 89, I believe I'll close with this. And I'll mark it and we'll finish. We'll start. This is a good stopping place forever. O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now, I want to ask you something. If it's settled in heaven, why are we trying to change it down here? I'm, I'm just asking, if God, did he give us a settled word down here? 
I mean, let me ask you this question. Did God give the word? He said he did. Holy men of God spake it, they were moved with the Holy Spirit. Now, the next question is this. Has God been as interested in preserving his word and protecting his word as he was in giving his word? Has he permitted a bunch of modernists and a bunch of Bible writers or a bunch of perversion boys to change his word? Or does he still have his witness in the world? I'm going to make this statement. If the King James Version is not God's word, then he has no word left in this country. And that's it. Now, you'd say, well, what right do you have to believe? A hundred scholars just got through rewriting. I don't care how many scholars got together. Only 40 wrote the thing to start with. Amen. I mean, just 40 of them took them 1,600 years, but they got it done. And I believe this. And I think it's foolish for us to say that with the Holy Spirit in the world, he cannot protect his own testimony. Amen. But that's what the modernists are saying today. Right. And, and I never put it like the fundamental modernists yeah. are saying, we're going to have to help the Holy Spirit get his testimony yeah. straightened out. Yeah. Bless his heart, he's been wonderful and fine, and he convicted me yeah. of my sin, but yeah. I'm going to turn around and do him a favor and straighten out his word yeah. for him. Brother, that's Preach. stupid. Yeah. Right. i tell you another reason. Every revival we've ever had, had come out of that book right there. Amen. The Mayflower had the King James Version for its compass. I mean, God has built this nation on this book, and every great revival preacher and evangelist has stayed with this book. Amen. Right on the other hand, there's never been a revival crawl out of one of the modern versions of the Bible. Never has yeah. been. Right. They do not, they have, they're batting zero so far as revival is concerned. Brother, God will protect his book. Thy Amen. word is settled in the heavens. And far as I'm concerned, it's settled down here. Amen. Have you settled this wonderful word in your heart? I was thinking, and I read the other day or some time ago where... The paper came out, or the article, and said, <clears throat> There was a time when the children gathered after the graveyard or cemetery experience, went back to the homestead, maybe six or eight children, and they began to say, What do you want of mother's belongings? And number one was always, I want her Bible. The Bible will go to the oldest child if they believe in the Lord and love the Word of God. The article went on to say, not anymore. The request of most of the children is, I want mother's colored television set. I'd like to look at what she looked at before she died. Folks, that's sad, isn't it? Oh, may God help us. There's a dear and precious book, though it's worn and faded now, which recalls those happy days of long ago, when I stood at my mother's knee with her hand upon my brow, and I heard her voice in gentle tones and low, blessed book, precious book. On thy dear old to stained leaves I love to look. Thou art sweeter day by day as I walk the narrow way that leads at last to that bright home above. Let's stand together now and sing the chorus. Blessed book, precious book. On thy dear old tis-stained leaves I love to look. Thou art sweeter day by day as I walk the narrow way that leads at last to that bright home above. Now, Father, we didn't get through the chapter tonight. 
But we thank you, Lord, for these 89 verses, and half of it at least, and how precious and sweet is thy word. And Lord, remind us tonight that we'll never be able to live the overcoming life unless we have the incoming word of God in our soul. Bless the folks that'll be in the altar tonight to say, Lord, I'm going to get back in the book. I'm going to give my life. I'm going to read. I'm going to believe. I'm taking a trip through the Holy Land from Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to read every word, every chapter, every book. I'm going to read every bit of the Word of God. I want you, Lord, to let the Word dwell in me richly in all wisdom and understanding, teaching and admonishing one of the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in my heart to the Lord. Oh, may tonight, once, listen, once you get your priorities straight on the Word of God, He'll do the rest. He'll do the rest. We're singing, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I'm waiting, yielded and still, standing everywhere and singing together now. Have thine own way, the Lord. Let's have some clay. No trouble with the potter or with the clay.
tu imes Stem tan un imes Deep on my heart Now, Father, finish the service and let it soak during the night, during the time of prayer. Bless all that have come tonight. Such a joy. Lord, bless our choir and girls and Brother Miss Cameron and Brother Joe and the ones that went on the tour. Oh, give them a great time there tonight and tomorrow and on Monday. Grant victory in the courtroom. Bless our visitors and our guests. And, Lord, we commit to thee the sick and ask for healing. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.